you would prefer to vote for vaginal myomectomy or you would prefer to vote for hypo that is the question vaginal myomectomy or hypo i know very less of us are, uh, are doing all this in india but then we will be soon doing all this so you you still have to work on what you like and over to dr niranjan to start the match thank you sir for a wonderful introduction and i want to tell all of you that there are 745 that is 745 doctors live with us right now and it's going to be a wonderful match i hand over the mic to dr narendra malhotra please go ahead sir so we have we've had the toss and it is won by rakman and rakman will be talking to us on vaginal myomectomy let's see your time starts now you can share your screen and you have 15 minutes at 14 minutes i will warn you one minute left and we will stop you at 15 okay thank you so much dr narendra mahotra thank you so much dr niranjan hello everybody my name is nandi from indonesia and then i have a topic about how to encourage you all to perform the vaginal myomectomy so for you who doesn't know the history the original myomectomy was performed in 1840s by atli and amusat through the vaginal surgery so and then in 1994 by adam magas they they he reported the first modern vaginal myomectomy in 1994 so adam magas is a, a a teacher of the late our friend the late rakesh sinha and then both of them are together reporting the case that they supposed to do it with laparoscopy but since the myoma is very far away in the cervical part they decided to switch the laparoscopy myomectomy into the vaginal myomectomy but it's not until 2006 when roberto carminati from uh, and friends from italy they they are issuing the anterior and posterior vaginal myomectomy which is the new surgical technique and then so we go directly into vaginal myomectomy this is i i get the picture from the roberto uh, report you know there are two axes the anterior axis and the posterior axis and then you should decide which axis that you want to use regarding the position and the size of the myoma so in here i would like to show you when we choose the anterior uh, axis when you want to take the myoma from the anterior part of the uterus so as you can see here you should scalpelizing your the cervix and then go in safely and then separating the bladder pillar on the side and then go safely inside afterward you take out the myoma take in by penaculum it was so easy and then you can suture it from below and then the procedure it's done and then you close up the anterior uh, colpotomy and then this is the final result but then we all should know that the vaginal root itself is been uh, used by the endoscopic procedure since 1901 and then it was started as ventroscopy and then continue into colpolaparoscopy colposcopy and then uh, in 1978 by diamond there was a diagnostic colposcopy and then our good friend stefan gortz inventing the transvaginal hydrolaparoscopy transvaginal endoscopy along with antoine waterloo which is uh, until now the tve and the fertiloscopy is the only vaginal notes in the off that could be done in the office setting and then in the gynecology itself it was the changgang team under the leader of the professor li who performed the first transvaginal notes in a nexal procedure there were they they performed three tubal sterilization three salpingectomy and then four ovarian tumor enucleation from may 2010 up to june 2011 and then li 
And for France also, I performed the Clan Vaginal Note Cystrectomy from May 10, 2010 to August 2011. And then the first time they published about the Clan Vaginal Notes Mimectomy was in 2014. And then they even can go further with the Clan Vaginal Note Surgical Staging. So, the transvaginal node, since this is an EPL endoscopic Premier League, so I'm going to uh, focus on transvaginal nodes. Transvaginal nodes is a marriage between vaginal procedure and a single port laparoscopy. So, by incorporating the advantage of the endoscopic surgery, vaginal nodes broadens the indication for vaginal procedures and help overcome its limitation. At the same time, the vaginal nodes appro approach will avoid the abdominal wall wounds and trocar related complication while giving more ergonomic position for the surgeon. So the thing, if you already perform a laparoscopy and if you already perform a vaginal surgery, you don't need any extra expensive device to start to perform the transvaginal nodes. All you need is a wound retractor. A wound retractor. This is some of the commercialized platforms that are uh, marketing in the world. And the, the one that I pull is the one that uh, extensively used in Indonesia and marketing in Indonesia. The other one is either too expensive or we just cannot afford it. So, This is the wound retractor and this is the single port that I use in my center. This is what we call the Nellis port. So, so I'm going to show you an animation how to perform hysterectomy nodes. Because the first thing when you want to try out transvaginal myomectomy, you should be able to perform transvaginal notes so as you can see here this is the vagina the cervix and the uterus so when you perform transvaginal hysterectomy notes you have two phases the vaginal phase and the endoscopic phase so the thing is you just skeletonizing the cervix like the way that our senior did it during the transvagina uh, the vaginal hysterectomy and then after you putting it you can take out the uterus easily and now if you already able to perform this you can expand yourself move forward into a myomectomy so in this slide I will show you if we have a myoma in the anterior side of the uterus. So what we do is, if in hysterectomy, we skeletonizing the cervix, doing both colpotomy anterior and posterior, if we take out myoma, we just choose which side that we are going to take. So like the one that uh, stated in Magos, we can choose our ex uh, anterior access or posterior access and then it's all the same vaginal phase but the thing is we need to put our re wound retractor in the anterior access and then continue with the endoscopic phase we can take out the myoma and then of course some of you may be wondering what will happen if we take out the myoma how we can we should cure it the thing is, if you are able to perform laparoscopic suturing ipsilateral, it will be very easy for you to perform suturing in vaginal nodes. It's even better because your position is very ergonomic. You are sitting down comfortably like what I do now, like Dr. Narendra sitting comfortably. And then we just do like this. It's like in karaoke, but instead of singing, we are 
moving our hand forward just like the way we do ipsilateral and then the myoma is done okay and then what happened if we have a posterior myoma so the re if we have the posterior myoma then of course you need to move your wound retractor to the posterior side of course there is still a learning curve you should be able to diagnose the myoma position and then you should be sure that there's no addition on the posterior part then you are safe to go and then afterward it's just another endoscopic phase take out the myoma do the suturing and it's all finished so in here i will show you how to skeletonizing the cervix the thing is i'm not a urogyne so i'm not really familiar at first with the vaginal procedure i know that most of my indian friends are a very capable uh, vaginal surgeon because i know professor purandare is come from india right he has the very good uh, technique and then the thing is what you need to do when you put skeletonizing the cervix for the first time you should avoid the bladder pillar which is lies on the 11 and one o'clock position and then you just dissecting it with scissors then you are sure that you are skeletonizing it safely and bleedless because the thing is when me and Dr. Salfa starting to do the transvaginal notes, if we have bleeders from the very first step, it will discourage us to go further. So this is the key point that you need to avoid the bladder pillar, especially if you want to use the anterior access. Then afterward, because the one that I'm showing you is the transvaginal hysterectomy but the same principle is applied so you just squeeze in the wound retractor like so and then push away with your long finger with your index finger and then if your finger is not long enough i'm using my middle finger like so just to position the wound retractor in the right place so for the upper side, you should put it behind the symphysis and then the wound retractor with lie comfortably and then not moving at all. And then afterward, you just move folding forward the second ring towards the vagina and then make sure the position of the wound retractor is firm and settled okay and then one of the key is to put in a gauze you see why gauze in any transvaginal notes procedure you perform either even it's hysterectomy even it's myomectomy or cystectomy the gauze will help you to put away the uh, column. Yes, so it will clear up your view and then everything will be nice. And then next is you need to apply the port. Then if you apply the port, then you are ready to go remember your position is like our position right now you are sitting down comfortably and then you just start to play so in the next video this is from our friend professor juan liu from guangzhou she performed she is a urogynecologist so in this part she performed a six centimeter uh myomectomy in the anterior part and then if you need to perform suturing in the transvaginal roots it will be better if you use 
the bark threads because the bark threads will able to give you the certain traction that you need without any uh, need for a further instrument and then it is done and then you can modulate the myoma within the wound retractor and then it finishes as you can see this is the wound retractor lies beneath the upper side of the uterus and then the upper part is lies beneath the symphysis and then you are good to go to perform anterior myomectomy so i came up to the uh, later part of my presentation so why vaginal nodes myomectomy first one is good for the patient it has no scar so if you because all our patient is a lady and a lady would appreciate if there are no scar at all and then not to mention the benefit if you combining the vaginal surgery with the single port surgery is very beneficial for the patient and then also broaden the limitation if you only perform it in the vaginal surgery way and then the best part for us is ergonomic this is very ergonomic very natural position for us it is easy for us and then easy for our back easy for our shoulder is very nice for the surgeon and the good thing is you do not need special extra equipment all you need yes doctor all you need is your skills and a wound retractor if you don't have a single port device it's okay you just use the wound retractor and then you put a a hand screw over the wound retractor and then you are good to go so it's more benefit it's cost benefit no scar more economic and no need to any expensive equipment i'm smiling at dr selfa right now <laughs> so i hope and i encourage you all to perform the vaginal notes and then if you are fine with it and then go to vaginal notes myomectomy and then of course as part of the notes group we have a page in the facebook where you can learn this part me and dr selfa is also part of the group so from indonesia from jakarta from the gatot subroto army hospital the presidential hospital i would like to say thank you and then for for vagina notes myomectomy thank you thank you so fantastic thank you dr nare and done no scar and you got rid of the fibroids and you sutured as also expert yes, comments uh, pk one minute one comment and then we go to the other one hey sorry i joined slightly late hi dr pk webinar nice to see you yeah. and it was it was amazing but yeah. i will not will not make any comment right now then, yeah because i am i am the umpire and uh, both narendra and myself we are umpire so we will wait for the second talk to be over and then we will see how rebuttal goes and then we will have our comments yes. so i have a great pleasure to invite you want to say anything naren yeah after you say then i'll after yeah. you invite him i think uh, it, it is great to see somebody from indonesia talking to us on webinar i think i have heard you for the first time on webinar and i am impressed so we will have you one uh, one more gentleman from malaysia dr sevala raja superman supermanium is a very good surgeon <laughs> so today, today we have two super super people who are going to talk to us on something which probably we should follow so it's a great pleasure to uh, have uh, you here from malaysia and which part of malaysia sir you belong to i'm from malacca malacca malaysia malacca okay 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 great so narin 
you have the introduction slide so uh, introduction has been given so okay. selva dr selva melakka we were there three years back where we brought a whole big tour and we were there at your college so uh, our friend nandi says myomectomy is like singing karaoke with the mic <laughs> and he says just open the vagina put in the scopes take it out suture it that's it no scar nothing and it and he's sitting and doing it so we would like to hear from you why even you should cut you can do it from far away so let's hear what selva has to say yeah okay let me sca- uh, share my screen yes please 15 minutes your time will start as soon as your screen comes uh can you see my slide yes we oh, can yes. okay uh firstly let me thank uh, the organizers uh dr shawan uh, dr malotra and dr uh, dr pk shah for inviting me to speak on this new topic uh it is called haifu so this is a debate so what i intend to do is uh, first part of my talk i will just give some information about haifu i think many people uh, might have heard about it but don't know exactly what it is so i will give a lot of information about haifu and and a little bit i will give a rebuttal uh, to what dr nandi has spoken because this is a debate so i hope i can clear everything within 15 minutes okay the first first uh, my first slide is what is haifu now haifu stands for high intensity focused ultrasound now basically we are using ultrasound beam we focus it onto a fibroid or adenomyosis and destroying the tissue causing them to shrink so the principle is here high intensity ultrasound waves are focused onto a focal spot by the haifu transducer this is the haifu transducer we focus the spot and the spot is called a biological focal region is actually the size of a grain of rice and that spot is heated up and it will cause destruction cause cavitation heating coagulation so the temperature goes up between about 75 to 100 degrees and this will cause necrosis and death of the tissue that we are ablating in this case a fibroid now you might have heard of uh, um haifu which is not very good because haifu actually has got two modalities one is called the mri based haifu and the second is called ultrasound based haifu the principle of haifu is the same that means we are using high intensity focus ultrasound but the modality of imaging is different one is using mri and the other one is using ultrasound so i will i will explain to you all what is the two differences in a little while so basically when we do uh, haifu this is how it is done uh, as as i said one focus will be one grain of rice and then we join the grain of rice to become a line and then we join the lines to become a volume and then for ultimately it becomes a volume so the fibroid is just sliced into different areas and it is coagulated slice by slice until we get the whole fibroid we kill off the whole fibroid and that is how it is done and uh, this is another video showing what is ha- what happens is you can see that you can see an ablation usually there's a gray scale there's a whitening of the area and then you go to another spot and it becomes white and then you go to another spot it becomes white again and this is how we know we know that the area is being coagulated so this is how uh, haifu works and here is another spot and so by looking at the gray scale we will know that the haifu has been the 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 tissue has been ablated okay let me show you all this little video second okay this this video now this video uh-huh. this video shows the uh, imp, uh, the safety features of haifu you can see that uh, this this is the transducer it is actually causing burns on this plate but when you put your hand across there's no burns at all so it's very safe procedure only the area where is uh, being ablated will get that this that get that uh, that that effect and here you can see we are what what is being done is that this word this stands for china in 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 mandarin chongguo and they have, they are writing this they are burning this area into an ox liver so this this exercise shows the precision of this machine which is is precise to burn these lines in the ox liver so this ox liver the, there is burn inside and is being sliced and this will show you how precise this machine is to ablate this line into this ox liver so this will give you an idea of how this technology works 
Now, um, as I told earlier, I, my job is to tell you all the difference between MRI-based HIFU and ultrasound-based HIFU. As I said earlier, the HIFU itself is the same, but the technology to visualize the fibroid or the uterus is different. So the advantages of the MRI-based HIFU is that it has got very good anatomical resolution. We know that uh, MRI will give you a good image compared to high, uh, ultrasound. That there is temperature monitoring with uh, MRI-based HIFU. However, the advantages of an ultrasound-based HIFU is that, as you can see, the transducers can move much better here than in this, in this uh, hollow area. And also, the patient positioning is also very comfortable here. Patients are very comfortable. It's an open concept, whereas here is a hollow. Patient gets claustrophobic. And there's a lot of noise with the MRI-based HIFU. But what is a big advantage is that the treatment time, because the transducers are bigger and you can position the patient better, you can do the procedures much faster than in an MRI-based HIFU. So it can be done within one to two hours, whereas in an MRI-based HIFU, it takes three to four hours. What is more important is the efficacy, what we call as a non-perfusion volume ratio, is much lesser in MRI-based HIFU than ultrasound-based HIFU. And that's the reason why MRI-based HIFU never actually took off. It has been around for nearly 15 years, but it never got took off. Another important factor is that anybody who does ultrasound can do an ultrasound-based HIFU, as opposed to MRI-based HIFU is only be done by an interventional radiologist. So any gynecologist, any ultrasound sonographer who has got a very good uh, spatial uh, uh, ability to look at the uterus, you can do an ultrasound-based HIFU. So uh, if, what are the advantages of this? The advantages of this is that it is a non-invasive treatment to preserve the organs. Um, the whole concept of using HIFU is not to remove the uterus, to try and preserve the uterus. Of course, it, it has also got the advantage of no blood transfusion, no radiation, and there is no, uh, no incision on the abdomen. And it is a daycare procedure, and the patient can get back to work very quickly. In fact, they can get back to work in one to two days. And the other advantage is that it is very precise, and uh, the ablation is very precise and it does not require general anesthesia. It's done only under sedation and uh, it is very comfortable and relaxed for the patient and it's got very few complications. I will talk about complications in the little while. So these are the big advantages. So the big advantages here as opposed to what Nandi says, uh, of course, Dr. Nandi, the, the vaginal myomectomy, there is uh, no incision on the abdomen, but still there is an incision on the in the vagina. But more importantly, there is an incision on the uterus, where else here, there are no incisions on the abdomen or the uterus. So that is a big advantage of this kind of ablative therapy. Now, uh, you might ask me, why is it not uh, known so far? Now, this technology, the, the one I'm discussing, ultrasound-based IFU, uh, is pioneered by China. It's in a place called Chongqing, China. And uh, so far, they have uh, brought it to many countries in the world. It is available in many centers in the United Kingdom, for example, Oxford, in Germany, in Bulgaria, in South Africa, in South America, and, in, and, and also now in Southeast Asia. And now only they are coming out and uh, promoting it in a, in, a, in a big manner. And it is available in more than about, now probably about 300 centers in Asia, 10 centers, more than 10 centers in Europe, and almost 150,000 patients have been treated with this uh, HIFU treatment using this particular model, which is the Chongqing HIFU machine. Now, there are many publications on this, uh, this uh, HIFU, especially by this company, HIFU company, and 52% of the literature on HIFU is by uh, Chongqing HIFU machine. And I will, I will, there are many, many publications. I have no time to talk about all the publications. My job is to convince you that this is a good machine, that uh, it, will, it will benefit patients who have fibroids. And this is one of the earlier papers that has been published. It is published, this is between 2006 and 2009, 757 patients were treated with this number of fibroids in this uh, university in Chongqing Medical University in China. And uh, out of the 757 patients, 293 are submucous fibroid, 668 intramural fibroids, and 153 are subserosal fibroids. And the non perfusion ratio is 84%. That is, that is how good this, this uh, particular machine is. And you can see that, the, the, as you know, in, in HIFU, unlike uh, myomectomy, myomectomy, you take out the whole fibroid and then you suture the uterus. Whereas in HIFU, we are not removing anything. We're just ablating and waiting for it to die. And it takes time to, for it to shrink. So this is the level of shrinkage. At three months, there's 31% shrinkage. At six months, there's 58% shrinkage. 12 months, 70%. 
24 months 82 percent and 36 months 89 percent so there is a there, there will be some residual tumor in the in the uterus but it in, in almost 90 percent of the patient it will shrink to a small um, a small number as far as the symptoms is concerned there is after 36 months 92 percent will have symptom improvement so that is a big benefit of using HIFU for fibroids now what about complications now this is a study that showed uh, 10,000 patients who have undergone ultrasound based uh, ablation for fibroids and adenomyosis and these are the complication rates uh, the complications are 10% but most of the complication which is serious complications is only 1.8% and the most serious complication is actually 0.46% uh, the most serious complication and the most serious complication is intestinal perforation if you use HIFU and there is a, a, a bowel along the way then you can perforate the bowel and it is only 2 in 10,000 so we, we can't even give this kind of figure for any kind of myomectomy is open vaginal or uh, laparoscopic myomectomy. The other complications are very minor complications like vaginal secretions, lower abdominal pain, buttock pains, hematuria, uterine bleeding, blurred visions. One of the complications that we worry about is skin burns, especially in patients with previous uh, uh, operations. If you have, they have multiple scars, these scars can absorb the, uh, the, uh, the ultrasound and can cause burns and these burns can be quite serious. So whenever a patient has got scars, we have to do it very carefully. This, this procedure is done in the prone position. I, I didn't have time to show you that uh, photograph and the patient actually will be lying on a bowl of ice cold water so that it will cool down this, uh, uh, this uh, skin when the ablation is done. So what about fertility? Now, one of the problems, of, uh, especially in uterine artery embolization, is that you have decre de decrease in uh, uh, what you call as AMH. There is a possibility that the ovaries fu ovarian function will be affected. This study shows that high food does not have any effect on AMH. So the, what, what they did is they took the, these patients and did the AMH first and then ablated the, the myomid the fibroids and then repeated the AMH and they found that ultrasound based high flow ablation of uterine fibroid and adenomyces was effective without affecting ovarian reserve. So we can safely use in patients who are keen to get pregnant. Another issue is pregnancy outcome. This is an area of my interest as well. So we know that if you do myomectomy, any type of myomectomy, open myomectomy, laparoscopic myomectomy, vaginal myomectomies, you're going to have an incision on the uterus. And there's always a worry of uterine rupture. It is not, not common, it's rare. I've actually reviewed this, but it's still a possibility. Here in this, in this particular study, there are 71 live births after 78 patients who have undergone HIFU and none of them had any risk of any obstetric disease, no, no uterine rupture. And the patients, most of them had normal vaginal delivery. So it is a very safe procedure and very little obstetric risk. So this is the advantage of HIFU. HIFU does not cause an incision on the uterus and the uterus is ablated and it shrinks. So that is a, that is a difference between uh, HIFU and uh, uh, myomectomy. So this is my area of interest which is intramural fibroid and fertility to operate or not. I did a review article, I wrote a review article, and my interest is that small fibroids, fibroids which are less than five centimeters, five, basically three to five centimeters, most of us IVF specialists would not want to operate on these fibroids. And especially if they are not, they are intramural. If they are submucous, of course, we have to remove them. But if they are intramural, non-cavity distorting, they are not done and we just do the IVF, we just try to get them pregnant. But in this review article, I, I showed clearly that presence of this fibroid actually decreases pregnancy rates. Although we get a lot of patients pregnant, but the pregnancy rates is actually lesser. So to do a myomectomy on this kind of patients with small fibroids is, is cruel. I mean, it, it, you, it, it, it's not nice to go and do a myomectomy just to remove a three centimeter fibroid. After reviewing all the different techniques available, including SMIA, UAE, I realized that the best way to treat this kind of fibroid will be by ablating, especially using HIFU. So this will be my area of interest and my area of studies to, uh, to see whether pregnancy will be improved by ablating these small fibroids and seeing whether the patients can achieve a pregnancy spontaneously as well as uh, by, uh, by IVF. So 
Uh, finally, let me uh, do a little bit of rebuttal to Dr. Nandi's uh, presentation. He presented very well. Now, myomectomy itself is a not a difficult surgery, but a tedious surgery, even laparoscopic myomectomy. But to do it by vaginal method, it is not going to be very easy. I have done uh, uh, quite a number of vaginal uh, V-nodes, hysterectomies and cystectomies. I have not done myomectomies yet, but I think it's not an easy, easy surgery. The excess ports are small. You know that you are going into the anterior pouch of Douglas, uh, ant uh, anterior chorophonics, and you're going into the pouch of Douglas. The area is small. And how many fibroids can you, uh, can you remove from this area? Vision is not very good. It's, I mean, Dr. Nandi showed very nice videos, but I can assure you it is a very narrow area uh, to try and look and remove all the fibroids that you want to remove. So, and also you can probably do a limited number of fibroids from this area. Again, uh, suturing, Dr. L L Liu showed that uh, it, it, she, she showed the suturing, but suppose you have a very large uh, intramural fibroid and you want to try and do it by vaginal myomectomy to suture it in two or three layers is not easy i have done this i have tried this by a single port it's not easy and although vaginal you have more space to do but suturing in three different layers is not going to be very easy finally it's also going to be very difficult to do repeated surgery when there is additions so uh, it's a novel method doing vaginal myomectomy but i think it's its uh, its usage is quite limited. So I have to uh, uh, go in a debate manner, uh, Dr. Nandi. So I have to say that if you want to compare the benefits of HIFU compared to vaginal myomectomy, I'm sure you will agree that HIFU will be a far better way to treat these fibroids than doing vaginal myomectomy. So that is my talk. I pass it back to you, Dr. Malhotra and uh, Dr. P. K. Shah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Narendra. So, um, after seeing uh, Salfa, I do have some agreement with her, with him, but some disagreement with him. But um, one thing for sure, that vaginal node myomectomy can be learned. It is neat and learning curve, but it can be learned. And then the good thing for us Asian is not going to cost us so much. Yeah, what Dr. Selfa doesn't mention to you, the price of the Haifu machine is expensive. Yeah. And then I think that's the most uh, winning point for the vaginal myomectomy for the uh, compared to Haifu fibroids. But in terms of intramural, I do have to agree. I'm a gentleman, Dr. Selfa, so I agree with you. Intramural Haifu will be more benefit. But of course, to be able to perform HIFU, you must purchase the machine, which as for now, I cannot afford it. <laughs> so what I'm offering you is to do the vaginal myomectomy, especially for the cerebral <laughs> type. It will be best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Selva. You also get one more minute. Okay, say, I, 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 I will not disagree that... Expensive uh, machine versus difficult surgery. That is what uh, the audience you have to own. Both modalities are new. Both are very good. But it's expense versus difficult surgery. So okay. be ready to vote yourself, audience. Okay, um, why I, uh, I, I totally agree. The machine is not cheap. It's expensive. But it's because it's new. So we hope that in time to come, the, the price will come down and more people will be able to do it. The biggest advantage of uh, HIFU is that any one of you who are doing ultrasound can do it. Okay, that means you just go for training, you come back, you can do it. So you can pool the data, you can pool together. Say in one city, Mumbai, you just have one machine. Pool, everybody pool together, buy one machine and everybody use it. You, you, can, you can do it. I mean, Mumbai has got 20 million people population. And uh, there are probably uh, hundreds of thousands of gynecologists. Each one just come up with a little bit of money and pool and do together. And I think you can do that, you see. So um, cost is a problem, I agree with you, but it is, if, if, if you're convinced that it is going to benefit the patient, 
uh, in a, in 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 so not all patients, but in certain patients, especially people who keep coming back for myomectomies, you know, uh, small fibroids where you don't want to do surgery. These are very good indications for patients uh, to do to do high food. So cost is a factor, but if you have the will, you can pull together and get one machine. I'm sure Nandi can do that you. in Jakarta. If you have the well. will, you can get the machine and cost. Both of them agree on one one point each. He agrees cost is a factor. And he agrees, intramural fibroid, I cannot take them out vaginally. Dr. P.K. Shah, your comments. I think we have seen after a long time a debate where both the sides were honest. So we have honest doctors from Indonesia and Malaysia telling us the facts and not trying to push us into any one of the topics or techniques. Dr. Nandi very right, very nicely with pictorial diagrams showed us how easily you can remove the myoma. It was so easy when he showed it. But I know we all Indians are more into vaginal surgery and one has to learn. Even if you are a good vaginal surgeon, whenever a new technique comes related to vagina, you must learn first, then it becomes very easy. But as you very rightly said, that is very easy to learn, easy to perform, quite ergonomic, and it's hardly any complication that you can think of. So in that sense, I think he was very right. At the same time, when you talk about high intensity focused ultrasound, we were told very nicely the differentiating characteristics of MRI guided and ultrasound guided IFO. And I, I know all of us definitely would prefer ultrasound guided IFO. It's very simple comparatively. And uh, it's not a question of Mumbai or India. I think we have to offer options to the patient and let her decide what she wants. She wants removal of the myoma or she wants reduction she wants in size so myoma. that symptomatically she can improve. So I think once you give all these options to her, let her decide exactly what she wants. We must have in our basket all these options available. I think a fantastic talk by both of them. And I would like all the viewers who are watching to give them a big round of applause. And I must thank Nar not, not only Dr. Narendra, because he is a good empire. And we don't have a third empire, so we have to decide between two of us only. And, we, we, and what is important is, every time we are called to do this umpiring, it is the BCCI chairman, Dr. Niranjan, <laughs> who does this job of appointing two um, to umpires Narendra and myself, because and of it's COVID, honorary job, honorary job. We are not getting paid yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah, we are doing totally honorary job, and uh, I could not join some of the endoscopic premier leagues because of COVID infection. But after joining, I think I am enjoying it much more. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Dr. Niranjan Chawan, for arranging such fantastic webinars, which are really good. People enjoy it. There is no heavy stuff going into their minds. It's taken in a very light note. At the same time, they are learning. Thank you so much, all of you. So I am getting a lot of results and they, they are pouring in the words and I'm getting and I'm just totaling them and we'll get back to you after Dr. Niranjan reads some comments. One of the comments was from Dr. Lee from Singapore. I love the cowboy hats of the empires. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you, the great umpires today. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit with an accent today. We have friends from Malaysia and Indonesia. And I want to read the comment from Dr. Lee Kin Wai. And he has said that there are many Singaporeans who are watching this match today. And I love the way Dr. Ichinandi talks. 
But Dr. H. Nandi, it's a misnomer to call single port or vaginal approach no scar. There are scars, but not visible or hidden scars. It's best to be more correct to inform patients that technology has invisible or hidden scars. So this brownie points goes to Dr. Selva. Supermania. <laughs> well, there is comments from many other Indians today and Dr. Geeta Shevgan from Aurangabad. This is a comment and she has appreciated Dr. Selva's wonderful video and the presentation he has done. And it's very important to avoid the complications. So she has asked you how you can avoid these complications which are there 0.1 percent. Selva. I mean, um, if you if you say that you never had any complications, even when you do surgery, that is not possible. So I think we cannot avoid complications, but we can select patients well. Um, in when we when I, I mean, as I say, I have not started doing haifu. Dr. Lee Kin Wai is, 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 is the one doing haifu. I have only went for training, and I am going to start. From what I know is that uh, if the if there is any suspicion of a bowel that is near the yeah, yeah. or in the area of the fibroid, then you got to be very careful. So that is the only way to avoid. And I, I think it's it, even, even in this series, it's done by experts. Two in 10,000, I think is very, very rare. I mean, the, so hardly any. Hardly any. So I think, I think we can accept that. We can accept that. If you want to have zero in 100,000, I think that, that is not, not possible. never possible, never possible. So we will, there are, there are techniques that we will do to prevent it. For example, we need to prepare the bowel. We need to bring the bowel away. There are a lot of things that we do when, when Haifu is done. So Haifu is just not shining, uh, just a uh, beam. There's a lot of procedures, a lot of learning things, a lot of, uh, uh, technology that you need to do before you can do it. Um, how to uh, shine the bean, what dosage to give, how deep to give it. So there are a lot to learn. It's not, not as simple as uh, what we think. That, so, and also just like uh, when we started doing uh, laparoscopic surgery, we started doing with small fibroids and we move on to bigger and bigger fibroids. Similarly, we will start with simple uh, uh, cases and then we move on to more and more difficult cases. Thank you. Any more comments, uh, Dr. Sir, 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 there are many, many comments here. And sir, Dr. Narendra Valatra, the results are to be announced, but we have to wait because the results, there are votes being pouring in, pouring in. So just wait, sir. And this is Dr. Meera from Varanasi. Varanasi is a holy place in northern India where we meet the Ganges, Yamuna and Saraswati where we meet at Allahabad. Varanasi is also the seat of our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and we have Dr. Meera there telling excellent program not for the sake of just telling but I loved each and every episode of Endoscopy Premier League TOG EPL rocks Dr. Pawan Deer from Ahmedabad this is again the capital where our Modi Prime Minister's Honorable Prime Minister has come. And he says, fertility after Haifu. This question is for Dr. Selva. What do you feel about the fertility after Haifu? He has already answered that yes, in the talk. Yes. But okay. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll answer again because just now I was one rushing through. Give you again. I was rushing through just now. Yes, yeah, uh, fertility is my concern. I'm also an IVF specialist. Fertility is my concern. <clears throat> the big advantage of uh, HIFU is that it will not reduce the ovarian function. Ovarian reserve is not affected because we are not we are we are focusing on the fibroid and nothing to do with the ovaries. As opposed to you try an artery embolization, there's always a worry that uh, there is a reduction in. Uh, uh, um, ovarian reserve. So reserve. you don't have to worry about ovarian reserve. Fertility outcome is the same as the patient before before high food treatment. And but uh, to add on to it, I am uh, more interested in this machine because I have, just like all of you all, have a lot of patients with adenomyosis who do not want to who want to get pregnant. 
and we don't know what to do with them. I mean, you can do an adenomyomectomy. It's a, it's a horrible disease, horrible surgery. I'll hate to do it because it's, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how much you're cutting. But this is an, an opportunity to ablate the adenomyosis, shrink the uterus, and hopefully the patient can, can of course, reduce reduction in symptoms and pregnancy. So this is the area of my interest when, in, 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 when, when doing high food. Thank you, Dr. Silva, bringing up adenomyomas and adenomyomectomy for HIFO. HIFO would be absolutely ideal treatment for adenomyosis. Dr. Niranjan, any more comments? Yes, sir. This is a this is a comment from Safog, Dr. Haldar from Nepal. Excellent umpiring and post-session comments. Two good speakers. The speakers were very good. Dr. Nandi from Indonesia. Excellent videos which you have showed of myomectomy and the procedure, how you do. We are all eager to see you in person when the corona opens. And thanks to TOG EPL and Dr. Niranjan to bring up fantastic doctors to India. This is Dr. Haldar from Nepal. Dr. Pavandir again is telling that Dr. Selva, you are doing a wonderful job. Dr. Pavandir from Ahmedabad. This is Dr. Ungai, Nairobi. We are having from Africa members, doctors, super talk by both the speakers. Dr. Kanya Menon from Koida Canal. High voltage drama. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you. Thank you. This is the wonderful comments. They are still coming. And I request Dr. Narendra Malhotra to announce the results. So we have finished well in time uh, uh, of our this grand finale of uh, IPL with excellent, excellent teams, uh, excellent talks, excellent points put, which are almost same. Now in India, I don't think anybody is doing a vaginal myomectomy like this. They are doing vaginal, they put in a morselator and I saw saw that uh, Dr. Kiran Kohle do one yesterday uh, on the Facebook, she put in our video. And I think there is only one or maybe two machines of HIFU which are MRI guided. And we, we do need an ultrasound guided because we are very good at ultrasound. And we are very good at vaginal surgery in India. So these two modalities will fit in into India very, very beautifully and very nicely. And when Indians are going to adapt to this very nicely because they don't want scars and they don't want uh, they want fertility to be saved and we don't want to cut the uterus to remove two to three centimeters intramural fibroids so the it's a tie it's actually a tie 15 oh. 49. Oh. do we have a super ball do we have a super ball 51 49 i consider is a tie uh, so indians want vaginal viability and indians want high food and fantastically well done very well explained and very well shown. Over to you, Niranjan, to close the match. Absolutely. That showcases the full pack stadium. The full stadium is full packed. It's 1,978 doctors which have logged in. And we are, I have a good comment here from Dr. Pratap Kumar from Manipal. Oh, my good yeah. friend. Yes, my good friend. Yes, Dr. <laughs> Selva and Dr. Nandi. Nice talk. It's nice to catch up with you guys. This is Dr. Sulubha Joshi from Nagpur. Nagpur is in the central India and right now we have just started the cold wave. It appears about the uterine bleeding pain, etc. will take long time to get relief. Dr. Selva, does it appear about the uterine pain and the bleeding which is there? Is it going to take long time? That's what she asked you, Dr. Selva. Um, the answer to the question is the bleeding, as I say, this is an ablative therapy. It will, it will not, there is not immediate as opposed to myomectomy. It will take some time, but from the experience within three, two to three months, the bleeding will be, we will be reduced. This is for fibroid. Pain, there is no pain as opposed to uterine artery embolization where it is shown that there's a lot of pain after the procedure. UAE is not because we are ablating and killing the fibroid, not shrinking its blood supply. That's the difference. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we have got now many, many comments and they want to learn vaginal myomectomy. Dr. Nandi, you have to come to India virtually probably. And 
Dr. Selva, they want to see Haifu with you doing at the hands-on along with Narendra Malhotra and Dr. P. K. Shah, the pioneers of ultrasound. So we are going to have a wonderful, probably a course coming in future and we will line up all those wonderful things on vaginal myomectomy on one side with our colleagues from Jakarta, Indonesia, Singapore and Dr. Selva along with our ultrasonologist and MRI specialist from India, Dr. Narendra Malhotra, Dr. P. K. Shah. Dr. P. K. Shah, I can see your hand raising, but just before yeah. that, I want to just one or two comments. This is Dr. Hari Prakash from Karnataka. Sir, please bring them to India. Yes, Narendra Malhotra, sir. We are all waiting for that big thing to come. Dr. Sneha Chavan. Sir, I am a student, but will I want to join the course first to join? Oh, already we have got up one student already asking to join the course. I, my God, I can't believe this. This should have... Nandi has an online course. Nandi has an online course. <laughs> go to, go yes. to his website and see the notes. Vaginal yes. notes. He said that. Wonderful, wonderful. This is Dr. G. Manasa Vishakapatnam. Excellent talks by both the doctors. And I now I ask Dr. P. K. Shah, sir, to please go ahead. I think Dr. Selva, uh, he visited Malakka when Dr. Pratap Kumar was the head of the department. I was, so, I, was long back. I was one of the organizing chairmen, yeah. Yes, yes I think I, was, I, I met you at that time. Such a great time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we met you at that time. It was a conference which was organized. And that was the time when I saw you first. So I was thinking all the time. And once the name of Malakka came, I realized immediately. Nice meeting you, and we will meet in person somewhere, at yes. least not not outside India, in India at least. Maybe we next will. year. We will, we will. Nandi, both of you will come together so that people will remember <laughs> that you fought in front of them. And then. We as are friends, a good friend. <laughs> we cannot fall. <laughs> <laughs> and as friends, you, you will teach them together. So oh, nice, very nice. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you both of you joining live. And thank you, the umpires, Dr. Narendra Malhotra, sir, Dr. P. K. Shah, sir. This whole EPL series wouldn't have been possible if you wouldn't have been there. And the way you have umpired. And of course, Dr. Pavandeep, who also joined. And it was amazing to see those wonderful pictures. And the way you have conducted, sir, it has become a hit in India. EPL is synonym to IPL. And I thank both of you. Amazing. And this showcases that that's what we have today. Maximum questions across India. And this surely was too good. The contributions which the speakers have given, fantastic. Thank you so much. And we will catch up next year, 2021. EPL or probably a Gynac Premier League coming up with a much wonderful time. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Right. Happy Deepavali. Yes, yes. Happy yeah, Deepavali. Yes, happy Deepavali. Happy Deepavali. Happy Deepavali. Happy Deepavali. Thank you. Thank you.